Amen. So a definition of honor for all of my note takers. It is to regard or treat someone with admiration and respect. It is to give special recognition to, to present honor on, or to bestow. Now, some of the synonyms are hold in great respect, which we do. Hold in high esteem. Have a high regard for. To admire look up to, think highly of, appreciate, value. Those should be all the adjectives that you are thinking in your head when you are thinking about your pastors. Because you are thinking about them as it relates to who God has put in our lives. Do you hear me? This is not, I know I'm going to tell y'all, it's so not about them. I know we make it about them, but it's not about them. And I need you to understand that. So look, one fun fact about honor, you know I like to do fun facts. Remember I told y'all a while ago that it was 8,810 promises in the Bible that all of us are supposed to have that we got to get? Okay, great. Well, did y'all know that it was 355 times that honor is in the Bible? 355, which means we should be doing this. There's 239 in the Old Testament and then 116 in the New Testament. And I just thought that was such a fun fact because honor is important to God and it's important for us to get. 1 Peter 2 and 17 in the America Standard Version. God, I know y'all be like, is she going to say a scripture or not? Okay, it says, honor everyone. Honor everyone. Love the brothers and the sisters. Fear God or honor God and honor the king. So let's look at some ways to honor the Lord. We're going to look at three ways to honor the Lord today. Uh, mouth, word, deeds, action, and worship, okay? So let's go to Psalms 34, 1 through 4 in the New King James. So yeah, so this says, isn't this good? This, I, I, I say this, I always say, this is my favorite verse, but, uh, but uh, you're going to hear me say, that's my favorite verse, but most of them are my favorite verse. So here we go. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul, did you hear that? My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. That's what happens when you use your mouth. When we honor God with our mouth and with praiseworthy words, there are benefits. Did you see in verse 4? He said, as I praise, as I bless, as I boasted in him, telling of his greatness and prayed, he answered and delivered me from all my fears. Honoring God with your mouth will free you from all your fears. What are you in fear of on today? What are you in fear of on today? Pastor Tina said that on last Sunday that fear was false evidence appearing real. And that a soul detox would rid you from that fear. Honoring the Lord with your words and praising him out of your mouth will help you with detoxing that soul and being delivered from those fears. Can we take a praise break? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to bless the Lord at all times. And his praise is going to continually be in our mouths. Now, you know, like I know, it is good to honor the Lord with your mouth and godly words. But it is your heart that he's after. He literally is after your heart. There's no honor if there's no love or no reverence for him in your heart. There's none. You can fake that is what you'll be doing. I'm going to get to that too. It's all a matter of the heart. By sharing the love of God, leading people to accept Christ into their heart, and discipling them. Just don't drop them off like Palop. Let's not do that. Discipling them so Jesus can change their heart. This will change their entire life. My life was changed entirely the moment I accepted him, and then when I was discipled by him, I saw more and more of the old Sedale being put away and the new Sedale showing up. And that is how I got here today. I got here today, standing in this sacred place. 
a woman who was promiscuous and dated anybody and had your man if I wanted to, husband or not, it didn't matter. You hear me? This woman, that woman, that woman who, who was more like the guy in the relationship, like I could, I could have sex with you and then be done with you and never talk to you again because I didn't care about you like that. God used that woman, do you hear me, to be in a pulpit to minister his word. Because someone took the time to share with me God, Jesus Christ, and who Holy Spirit is. And I let it change my life forever. My husband has been the only man I've been with since the day I got saved. Do y'all hear me? And that is a miracle all by itself. So don't tell me God can't change you because he can. And I'm living proof that he can. It's all he ever wanted from the beginning was a heart. From the moment he created Adam for fellowship so he could walk with him and talk with him. He said, look, in the cool of the day, it was relational. It was father to son. It was heart to heart. That's the gospel. God loves you. Jesus died for you. They want to spend eternity with you in heaven. It's a heart to heart. That's what he wants. And that's how we're going to learn to honor. Amen. Isaiah 29 and 13 says, this is what I was talking about. Why is your heart? These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. But their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules that they have been taught. I ask you, please do not let your honor of the Lord be for the sake of tradition. You're checking off a box, making the word of God void and non-effect in your life. Because think about it, Matthew 15, 17, he called the Pharisees hypocrites for that very thing. Because they was, oh, they was talking real good. But their hearts were far from him and they was living absolutely nothing. And then he even quoted in Matthew 8, 15 and 8, he went back and quoted it and said, you know what, your honor is predicated on that. Your honor, he told, he, like, not only did Isaiah say it, but Jesus came back and said it to them. So your honor is predicated on your relationship and your heart belonging to and following the one that you are honoring. Now, you need to keep that in mind because if not, you'll be considered a hypocrite. And I am more than positive that nobody in the, under the sound of my voice wants to, want Jesus to even consider them a hypocrite. And those were Jesus' words. They were not mine. Amen? We're going to honor him with our whole heart. Did I say that was my objective? Wholeheartedly learn how to honor. Because when you do, it'll spill in every area of your life. All right, let's go to our deeds and our actions. Colossians 3 and 17. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him, him who is Jesus. Now, in the Passion Translation, it says it like this. Let every activity of your lives and every word that comes from your lips. I'm going to say it again. Let every activity of your lives. What activity? You know, drinking your coffee, driving your car, making groceries. Um, what else? Uh, change your baby diaper, going to school, going to work. Let every activity of your lives and every word that comes from your lips, every word. Because remember, we're going to be, uh, he said that he's going to judge us on every, every word that comes out of our mouth. Yeah, I know, I know, right. Every word that comes out of our mouth. Drench, let me go back. Let every activity of your lives and every word that comes from your lips be drenched with the beauty of the Lord Jesus, the anointed one. And bring your constant, and I say we're going to praise him continually, your constant praise to God the Father because of what Christ, look, has done for us. He's done it for us. This is why. This is why this should be so easy in our lives. So we're going to look at some young men who did this, who gave honor where honor was due. And they did this in word and they did this in deed at the same time. 
We're going to go to Daniel in just a few minutes, and I'm not going to read all of Daniel when we talk about um, May, um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but I am going to give you a, a little synopsis, and then we're going to get to Daniel 3. So we know this King Nebuchadnezzar, this dude built a nine, look, a gold nine-foot statue, and it was nine feet wide. Who does that? Right? That's got some, that's some arrogance, I tell you. But he built this, this huge statue, and he said, every time y'all hear the sound of the harps and they play this music for him, y'all got to bow down. And he said, everybody, look, it was in every province. Like, all, every province had to bow down. And he told, the, he told the, the leaders, like all the military guys, the judges, treasurers, officers, he said every provincial, every provincial office, official needs to assemble and make sure that you tell everybody, all y'all, your mama, your daddy, everybody, bow down when y'all hear this. So then they told it and all them bow down. And then they found out that the Jews, the chosen people, right, was like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> right? So they say, I'm not doing that. I'm not worshiping your gods or your nine foot, 90 feet statue. I'm not doing that. And three young men stood their ground and honored God. But look, and then they honored the king with their mouth at the same time. Let's go to Daniel 3 and 13. <clears throat> then, because you know, he got mad, you know, he got mad, Nebuchadnezzar got mad. He said, okay, so it says, then in a fit of rage and anger, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Immediately, they were brought to the king. So Nebuchadnezzar, trying to be gracious, I guess, asked them, hey, y'all, is, is it true that you don't honor my gods or worship the gold statue that I set up? When you hear the sound of this ram, the horns, the flutes, the lyres, the harps, all these string instruments, the harps, playing at the same time with all other kinds of instruments, will you bow down and worship the gold statue I made? If you don't worship it, you will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Now, this is pretty tight, y'all. Okay. What God, listen to this question. What God can save you from my power then? Ooh, right. Mm -hmm. So they said, because this is how they honored him. They said, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, we, this is the first thing they said. And I hope they didn't say it like I'm getting ready to say it. We don't need to answer your last question. I'm sure they didn't say it like that. I'm sure they didn't say that, but I'd be like, what? Please. I don't even have to, I don't even have to respond to that. Because the question he asked him, the last question he said, he, they, he had the nerve to ask him, what God can save you from my power? They was like, we don't have to answer that. He said, but if our God, whom we honor, can save us from a blazing furnace and from your power, he will. But then they said, your majesty, Right, you see what I'm saying? They gave him a little honor. They said, oh, your majesty. Because they know. They know who he is. But if he doesn't, you should know your majesty will never honor your gods or worship the gold statue that you set up. Now, I'm sure they didn't say it like that. All right? But that's what they was like. They was like, we ain't doing that. We are not doing that. They honored the king with their words by addressing him as your majesty, but they honored God in the highest of their words, their deeds, and their actions. And so I'm saying to you, we do honor authority. We do. We do honor the authority in the land. We do. Until it go against the word of God. Do you hear me? Oh, we got the, the buck stops there. When it go against the word of God, the buck stops there. You know what? I'm not bowing down to your God or your huge gold statue. Because even if he don't deliver me, you will never get me to do that. Okay, well, they threw him in. Let's go back to the story. So they threw them in. They told him, he was so, oh, but he was so mad. He was in a fit of rage. He was so mad. Then he told him, turn the furnace up. Turn it up. I was like, okay. He turned it up. Some of his guys died in the process. And so he's sitting there, and then he look. He said, wait, I know we, 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 wait, we turned it up. We bound them together. They're tied up, y'all. We bound them together, and then we threw them in. We just did three, right? It was just three guys, right? Okay, let's pick up in 25. The king replied, but look, I see four men. Look, they're untied, walking in the middle of the fire. 
No, they walking in the they walking in the middle of the fire like this. Like, oh, okay, right? Okay, and it's four of them. The fourth one, he says, looks like the son of the gods. I would like to interject something right here. That no, he did not look like a son of the gods because he looks like the son of the true and living God that delivers us from all of our fears. I, I was like, he don't like no, no son of no God. I hear the song. I don't know if y'all know the song. There's this song that said, there's another in the fire standing next to me. I said, yes, they had another in the fire. And this is how you need to look at the next fiery furnace that comes your way. The next situation that comes that look like it's, it's going to take you out of here, that look like it's going to burn you up. This, no, you got somebody in the fire. It's for y'all. You got your, you got, look, you got your crew, remember? You got your crew. That situation will dissipate. You better know that you are not in that fire by yourself. And did you notice that they at first they was bound? When he threw them in there, they were bound. That's how your situation, don't our situation do that? It make us bound. We all tied up, can't do, whoo! But when he in the fire with you, all that is loosed. You are loosed. You are loosed. And that situation changes as soon as that fourth man, Jesus, shows up. He loosed them and they were free while they was walking around in the fire. Amen? Amen. So then Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, because, you know, now he's astonished, as he should be, went to the door of the furnace and said, called all of them, Shere, Meshe, Benel, come out, come, come, come here. Look, then he says, servants of the most high God. <laughs> now the king is giving honor to God, right? Now the king. No, he's like, oh, no, this for real right here. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, this is 26. I'm sorry, y'all. Thank you. Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego came out the fire. All the king's advisors, all them dudes, they saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies. Their hair on their heads wasn't singed right? Their clothes weren't burned, and they didn't even smell like smoke. What? That's how you come out the fire with Jesus. Don't even smell like smoke. He said, look, this is Nebuchadnezzar talking. Praise the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This is how you teach somebody how to honor your God. Praise the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angels and saved his servants who trusted him. They disobeyed the king. I told y'all, authority until they come against your God. They disobeyed the king and risked their life, even if it comes to risking your own life. Because who are you going with? It's going, ooh, y'all, it's later than you think, y'all. It's going to come a day. It's going to come a day that you're going to have to choose who you want to be with. Do y'all hear me? It's going to come a day. Woo, even if you got to risk their lives, so they would not have to honor or worship any God except their own God. So look, so then look what the, look what the king did. Would it be great if, if, anyway, look what the king did. So I ordered the people from every province, every nation or language who say anything slanderous about the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Look, they're going to be torn limb from limb. Look, then their houses are going to be burned and turned into piles of rubbles. Because no other God can rescue like this. No other God can rescue you like this. No other God. No other God. Look, and then the king promoted them. How about that? <laughs> they clearly disobeyed him. <laughs> and he's like, oh, no, I want them on my team. I'm going to promote them. This is what honor looks like in word and deed and how you are the benefactor. Not only are you rescued, you are, you're not burned up. Look, you don't look like what you've been through. I don't look like what I've been through. And I tell you, I ain't heard half the story. I done been through some stuff. But I don't look like what I've been through. There is no residue from that situation. I don't even smell like it. I don't even smell like it. There's no residue from that situation. Honoring God with your mouth, word, actions, deed. Look, it can save your life and the other people's lives around you. It didn't just save one of their lives. All three of their lives were saved. 
Honoring God can produce a miracle in your life. Look, that will get you promoted. I just heard on yesterday that honor is a shortcut to increase. Do you hear me what I say? Y'all better learn how to do this thing. I hope y'all hear me. It said again in Colossians, let every activity of your lives and every word that comes from your lips be drenched with the beauty of our Lord Jesus, the anointed one, and bring your constant praise, not some of your praise, not every other day praise, but your constant praise, not only when I come to church on Sunday praise or when I'm online on Wednesday praise, not, not no, your constant praise to God the Father because of what Christ has done for you. Amen. Again, I said my objective on today is to solidify for the believer how to honor wholeheartedly so that it will become a lifestyle. I want y'all to pray this prayer with me, and we're going to do one more, and I'm going to let you go. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. We pray that our every step, our every word, our every action, our every thought, and our every breath, Give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Your every step, your every word, your every action, your every thought, your every breath, it can be done. It can be done. It can be done. Last, we're going to honor God in our worship. And y'all practically did the whole thing this morning. The, the pray, can we get a praise team a hand? Clap of praise. <laughs> They ushered us into the presence. Because the presence is here. They just ushered us right into the throne room. Right into the throne room. And when they did, they literally preached the last part of my message. Worship. And I got this from um, Pastor AJ on Friday when he was doing um, Coffee and Conversation. He went to Romans 12 and 1. And I'm doing it in the, um, the Good News Translation. No, I'm doing it in Passion. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm doing the Passion Translation first. It said, Beloved friends. What should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercies to us? What should be that? Beloved friends, what should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercies? Just look, and then he answered the question. <laughs> to surrender yourself to God to be his sacred living sacrifices and live in holiness, experiencing all that delights his heart. For this becomes your genuine expression of worship. Your genuine expression of word. This is the, the, the one that says, I beseech you, therefore, brother, the mercy of God. You know, this is your reasonable service. That's that scripture. And Pastor said it on the other day. When he said it, it hit me. I was like, oh, yeah, I got to, Holy Spirit, we got to work with that. Because that is what worship is. We are submitting our entire lives. We're surrendering our entire lives to you. So because of his marvelous mercies that are new every morning. Did I say every morning? Because every morning we wake up on this side. It is a new mercy. And they're too great to number. They're too great to number. Our bodies are entirely, our, excuse me, our body entirely should be presented and offered to God. Look, as a daily living sacrifice, surrendered. We saw it all bowed down before him at his throne, bowed down, kneeling at his feet. We saw it this morning, y'all. It was just so it was just, it was my message. I was like, it's so great if we could just lay right there with complete dedication, wanting to please him and him only. Nothing about us, nothing about us. Just wanting to please him and him only. That is worship. With prayer that this body, this body that's made from dust, we are from dust, that this body is acceptable to him, which is our true, genuine expression of honor. And genuine expression of worship, which God says, look, it's your reasonable service anyway. It's your reasonable service. He gave, Past AJ gave us homework um, in September to read Revelations. And I'm closing with this. Chapter 4, and I'm going to paraphrase it so it's not up here. And this is what John saw in a vision. And this is what worship, genuine expression of worship looks like. And this is what we'll be able to be a part of, y'all, when we leave this earth and obtain our heavenly bodies and be before the throne day and night. This is so good. John saw 24 elders, leaders, and these are earthly leaders. These are 24 people who were here and they're elders, and he see them on the throne. 
and they're and bow, they're bowing their heads to the ground before the one on the great white throne. Suddenly, these elders, they took their crowns off because these are our real leaders here, and they had crowns of their own, their accomplishment. They took their crowns off, and they threw them before the throne. And they started erupting in song, singing, You are worthy, O oh God, to receive glory, to receive honor, to receive power. You are worthy. The expression of the worshipers in heaven are extreme, as they should be. There is constant action of honor and deep respect to the one who sits on the throne. Not only do the 24 elders fall upon the ground in humble reverence, but they also hurl their crowns at the foot. Those crowns that represent trophies and accomplishments and victories and degrees and pedigrees and all your successes. You come by no merit of your own. Because it's not about you when you are worshiping and when you are bestowing honor. You come acknowledging Jesus as the supreme king of kings, of all kings. We simply lay it down, all of it, in total submission to the ruler of heaven and to the ruler of earth. The act of honor continues endlessly in eternity. That's why you got to get it here. That's why you got to understand how to honor here. Because it's a continuous act in eternity. Having the attitude of honor causes our genuine expression of worship to be filled with wonder and awe. My God. When we honor and worship by putting the Holy One and his only Son that paid the price, glory to God, at the center of our lives, then and only then will worship cause astonishment and amazement and honor will become your lifestyle. That's when it happens. We are to honor him in word, deed, and in worship and in our actions. And when we do that, when we give it all to him, to the only true and living God, that's when you'll have the astonishment and amazement and honor will be exactly what you want to do Look, as it said in 1 Peter, to everybody, to everybody. Pray this with me. Heavenly Father, I want to lay down my life and my accomplishments at your feet in worship. Continue to reveal to me the magnitude of your majesty and wonder. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah.